Welcome to Cope With Hope. Today I have Lindsay Denham with me, who is an emotional support facilitator. She's a heart-centered emotional support facilitator. I just love that. She's worked for 26 years as an RN at the neonatal uh, center, as well as the pediatric center. So she's worked a lot with the families of these babies and children. And I know that she's worked a lot with the emotional well-being of the youth. Batch flower is her passion, and she believes in the healing of natural batch flower remedies. So thank you so much, Lindsay, for agreeing. Thank you. To speak to thank me. you for inviting me. <laughs> I, I'd like you to start with last year, because we all know what last year was like. And what sort of emotional support did you offer? And what about the youth? You know, I, throughout last year, I kept thinking of, of you know, teenagers and the youth and what would they have been going through during the lockdown? And I know mm. that's your speciality. Well, it is and it was uh, very much so when I was in the UK. When I'm from Scotland, so I'm in Canada now. So yeah. I don't have the clientele that I had when I was in Edinburgh, yeah. Yeah. where I was very involved with my children's schools um, yeah. when they were at high school and in junior school, actually. So um, I, I can probably talk more about how the remedies could have helped youth okay. last year and this year. Canada's still being very affected by COVID. Yes. And, yes. Um, our schools are being uh, gradually brought back to face to face. But yes. every day there's another school closed because there's COVID cases. So, you know, the parents um, are having a really difficult time trying yes. to juggle work from home or work yes. not from home and children at school or not at school and um, for me the bachelor remedies are for emotions yes. so really it doesn't matter the age of the person yes. the emotion is the same yes. so whatever emotion the i mean the youth have had everything disrupted last year you know they didn't graduate in the normal way they didn't have their proms in the normal way yes. you know there was all these they, they can't even interact with their peers. They can't have go on new dates. They can't, you know, there's all these things that yes. are missing um, from high school, junior school and college, you know, like universities. The university life is not university life that perhaps, you know, they had signed up for, I think. And yes. there's a lot of disappointment, a lot of disappointment out there. Yes. So what would you recommend for disappointment? Is it like individual or is there a remedy? There's um, there's a remedy called gentian, which is very good at lifting people's um, despondency when there's something to be despondent about. You know, the the remedy, you know, someone has maybe failed an, failed an exam or, yeah. or been beaten in a tennis game or, you know, whatever the disappointment is that that person yeah. knows exists. Yes. Gentian just helps to let go of that disappointment and to, to feel more positive and move forward. Okay. And how did you come to Batchflower? Being an RN, you must have been working with like antibiotics and other sort of normal, let's say, mainstream medicine. How did you find Batchflower? Or how did it find you? <laughs> well, yes, it found me. Um, my first taste of it was with Rescue Remedy when my older two kids were very small. And in fact, I think I had three by then. Um, and, and one of my colleagues at work, when I was talking about having adult tantrums at them, you know, I would <laughs> lose control at them um, because I, I wasn't coping. She told me to pick up some rescue remedy yeah. and I'd never heard of rescue remedy before. And I bought some and I put it in the cupboard. And I remember thinking at the time, I don't know if it works, <laughs> but I stopped, I stopped yelling long enough to go and take it. Okay. So in that respect, you know, it did work. Yeah. It was many years later. Um, one of my friends had been using the bachelor remedies for years and I had laughed at her for years. I would say that stuff to, couldn't possibly work when she explained to me it was just the energy of plants and trees. And I, I <laughs> laughed hard. and it was actually it was her that when I finally came to falling apart because my third round of antidepressants didn't work um I, I you know and i was off work 
because I couldn't focus and everything was just falling apart and, and it was her that I fell apart with and she said, look, what's the worst that can happen? You know, you, you don't feel any better, but what's the best that could happen if you go see my practitioner? And I, I, I was desperate, I was really desperate. Yeah. And I, uh, I went and I think I cried for the whole hour and this, this woman just listened. And I had a bad back at that point in time. I, I'd had several surgeries. I was booked in for back surgery at that point in time. And, um, and she said, Lindsay, I can't fix your back with these remedies, but I can help how you feel about your back so I can fix how you feel about your yeah. back. And that was it for me. And my first mix, my husband thought he had a new wife. He said, oh, wow. no, will not come back. You know, it was like, he, <laughs> because I was calmer, I wasn't exploding, I was, yeah, yeah I was I was different. And it, it was, it was like, I think I needed to be so desperate for me to, to believe that they worked. You know, I needed to have that kind of really big miracle happen for me to switch from Western medicine to yeah. Patch flower remedies. So they have been my go to for 19 years now. No antidepressants, no surgeries. <laughs> no antidepressants, no surgeries. So would you recommend this for everything? Yes, it's my it's, it's my kind of first first aid. It's my um you know, when my kids my kids are all in their twenties now, but they know that if 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 anything is going on with them, if they hurt themselves, if they burn themselves, if they um you know, if there's been a fight, a shock you know, they know I'm going to say, take some rescue remedy. Yeah. And they know that if they come to me with a problem that's emotional, I'm going to say, look at the book, look at the list. What do you need? You know, remedy wise. Okay. And sometimes they say, oh, I just want to be angry or I just want to be miserable. <laughs> and that's <laughs> okay. You yeah. know, I, I get there as well. You know, sometimes I want to go into my poor me cave and sit there for a while. But, you know, yeah. it's it's not a great place to spend your time. So. Um, so for me, it's, um, I think my biggest job or my biggest reason for being here was to be their mother. You know, it was, oh. it was, uh, I didn't want kids, you know, they were given to me um, yeah. <laughs> so that I would grow, so that I would become this person that I am now. Yes. Wow, that's beautifully said. They were given to you so that you would become this person who you are now. That's gorgeous. I, I, I ran from everything before my unexpected saviour was born. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, that was my coping mechanism was to run. I just left. Leave that behind. Three saviours were born. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you know, and I, I, when people say to me, you know, about the, the kids and I say, you know, what, I, I just, I, I was a nanny. I was a nanny for two years oh. when I first came to Canada many years ago. And uh, I, I decided before I before I was a nanny, I wanted four children and I was a nanny for four children. And at the end of the two years, I didn't want any children. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. And then the saviors were born. Exactly. Joy to the world. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I just love it. And tell me now, um, like, do you have a, a batch flower kit that you'd recommend people to keep at home? Or do they have to go to a, a practitioner and ask for a particular remedy? What would you tell all households to have? Oh gosh, Dr. Batch wanted all households to have a box of remedies. I have, I have actually two boxes sitting beside me, one on either side. Um, but the you know, they, they come in like lots of different varieties, but I, you know, this is kind of my travel one. It's okay. just a little box. Yeah. I used to have small bottles, but now it's been replaced with big bottles. Um, and if, you know, it's it's expensive, well, yeah. it's ex relatively expensive to buy, yeah. but compared to buying the single ones, you know, it's, it's a, a good investment. Yeah. So for me, a client who is interested in the remedies, interested maybe in learning more or 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 taking the first level of the course um, and they ask me about the remedies i say to them if you can in any way afford it buy the box rather than um the single ones okay so because then what happens is you maybe have 10 single ones and you decide you want to buy the kit so you've yeah. got an extra that you know you don't they're extra but I've, i give mine away i'm just i've got a set ready that of out of date ones 
that I'm going to give to a student who can't afford to buy a SAID. So okay. they still work after they're out of date. Yeah. So yes. Yeah. 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 So my mother, her go-to was rescue remedy. Everything you just have rescue remedy. And I think that intention was so was so clear for her that that sorted out everything, you know. And we grew up with that. Our dogs got it, the plants got it, yes. the anybody who came to our house got it if they were feeling out of sorts. Somebody wanted to throw a tantrum. Okay, you could throw the tantrum, but first you have the rescue remedy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's you know, it's it's such a simple um uh, gift to be able to give to people you know I yeah. I don't shy away from bereavement you know I, I've always been somebody who is quite comfortable around bereavement and uh, you know I would take rescue remedy to someone that that was bereaved rather than a bunch of flowers you know I would yeah. go with some rescue remedy um, the it, it's just yeah it's, it's such a miracle in a little bottle you know I, really as I said earlier it's, it's our go-to here you know my son plays rugby and uh, he played on this side of the pond when I was in Scotland for many years and you know he knew that if he got injured he had to start taking his rescue remedy yeah and they asked me for some Reiki you know so I was saying some Reiki as well and okay. he always healed much faster than they told him he would you know, they would maybe say, oh, you'll be out for 12 weeks and he would be back in half that time. So yeah, um, yeah it just, just helps everything to, to like to, the, I mean, the Star of Bethlehem in it for the the um, the healing aspect, that's at all levels, you know, physical, mental, yeah. emotional, spiritual. It just goes in there and helps the effects yeah. of all that shock. And that's the, the big thing about the pandemic. It's, it's almost like everybody, not everybody, there are some people who have thrived in yes. in so it's not it's not everybody but there are lots of people that are already suffering ptsd yeah. and will come out of covid with ptsd yeah. you know and it, rescue remedy is such a simple thing for them to start taking to deal with all that shock to their system you know all those little shocks over yeah. the, the year and the months yeah yeah so tell me something i know after covid like i had covid and there are a lot of palpitations before, I mean, with it. And then up to now, I had it last September. So would you would you recommend Rescue Remedy for those palpitations? I, I would, actually. I mean, the remedies aren't for physical healing as such. What yeah. the Star of Bethlehem does is it goes in and it heals the emotional or the spiritual or the physical yeah. effect of the shock. So it's not actually to heal the COVID, but no. it's to heal the effects or the emotional effects of the shock. Yeah. So, yes, I would, I would um, definitely recommend that people add... Um, either Star of Bethlehem or Rescue Remedy into their healing process because yeah. again if I go back to what I said at the beginning what's the worst that can happen? Nothing oh. you know you heal at the same rate but yeah. what's the best that can happen is that you heal faster and, and more easily yeah that, that's wonderful and, and like how much Rescue Remedy because I, I, I don't know the, you know I just have whatever I feel like yeah yeah it's well it's a uh, Rescue Remedy is um double the dose that you would take of any of the single remedies so it's you can get it in just the little bottle I like have that this stuff, you yeah. can get it in spray form or yes. you can get it in castle form yes. but the dose is four drops four times a day yes which is the kind of um you know the the, the single remedies would be two drops four yes. times a day. yeah but normally if, if someone is going to use it long term for e economical reasons as much as anything you can put four drops of the rescue remedy into like a, a mixing bottle like this a 30 yeah. ml mixing yeah. bottle and then just take four drops of that four times a day okay which then allows you if you wanted to add um you know and maybe you do need some gentian for encouragement to feel positive you yeah. could also put two drops of gentian yeah. into into that yeah okay for years i used to just have rescue remedy all day and, and, you know, like, as I said, the minute we hit menopause, my mother said, that's it, rescue remedy time. So, you know, my friends recommended it and they recommended it to each other. And, yeah, and I still tell anybody who's feeling, you know, okay, fine, just keep rescue remedy in your bag. You know, and when you feel cranky, don't speak, just have the rescue remedy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's it's such a, a you know there's there's five five different remedies in rescue remedy and dr batch put them together because 
he felt that they would cover all emergency situations. And for me, the reason they cover you know, all emergency situations is because the Star of Bethlehem is in there for the, the shock from any situation. Yeah. And also um, Cherry Plum, which is the remedy for that feeling where you're just going to lose control, you know, that inner yeah. time bomb or inner um, pressure cooker, you know, when everything, yeah. you're trying to keep it all in and you're just, you know, you think you're going to lose control, you're scared, you're yeah. going to lose control. And for me, it it doesn't matter what emotion is out of balance, we can get to that point if the emotion is out of balance, you know, so it doesn't matter whether it's impatience or intolerance or anger or, you know, all of those can lead to that cherry plum loss, fear of loss of control. Yeah. So cherry plum just brings down everything from that boiling down to a manageable, okay, I can do this. Yes. You know, so I think that those two especially, um, I'm not saying the other three aren't necessary, but I think it always works because those two are in it and, and yeah, one of yeah. those two are needed in an emergency situation. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just what your passion for this is wonderful to hear. I just oh. already feel like I've had this clarity. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love it and I love talking about it. And uh, yeah. I used to, as I say, do a lot of work in my kids' schools uh, in yeah. Edinburgh and I would walk around with my rescue uh, remedy tin <laughs> Teachers would see me coming and they would just put their hand out, you know, like I'll have one of them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, that's wonderful, you know. I mean, I think of my mom because in those days, things like this weren't so available in India, you know. And she's just a rescue remedy. And I just used to love it. Well, yeah. dog was barking or too cranky. Bring, bring her here. Bring her here and give her some drugs. <laughs> Yeah. Amazing. I know. Yeah. I know. Yeah. It's uh, you know, and and you you know you can use it for your plants. You know, plants. You know, they give to us, but we can also give back to them through the the remedies. And someone, and I haven't done this yet, but I plan to do it. Um, someone suggested to me that all all the practitioners, all the batch practitioners, go to a body of water close by to them and put some star of Bethlehem into the water. To help heal the world, and I thought, oh, "Whoa, I love whoa. this!" I'm yeah, do it that, for sure. Yeah, yeah. I just haven't. We've got a little creek that runs down into Lake Ontario, uh, so and I'm going to go and put them in. It yeah. just, it just seems like something. Again, you can't do any harm with it. No. But imagine the good if we all did yeah. it together. So yeah. to release Star of Bethlehem in a body of water near you, just, just a, a bit of it or a little bottle, to heal the world. I love that. Gosh. Because it's all energy, isn't it? I mean, we're yeah. just all energy. Yeah. The world is energy. The earth is energy, and we're yeah. all connected. So, yeah. I love that. Just releasing the star of Bethlehem to heal the world, and that's really what's needed today. You know that mm -hmm. this, that we all get together and, and and send healing everywhere. You know, it's so important. You're there in Canada. I'm here in India, and I'm with Toronto. I'm in Bangalore, but I can feel that healing as you even say it. Yeah. That's the power of healing. That's it, isn't it? It's the yeah. it's the power, and I think for me, because I had this very Western medicine non-belief of anything spiritual, really. Um, I, I was brought up in the church in the, the, the you know in the Church of Scotland, but um, that was a different kind of spirituality. That was when I was very much told there was a, a God and He controlled everything, and you had to be fearful of doing anything bad. So of course, when I started to do all the bad things I did in my life, I felt really, um, <laughs> you, know, I, 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 you know, I didn't live my life the way God told me I was to. So I, I broke away for years, you know, like for years from everything. But I had nothing. I was like this little lifeboat floating around with no nothing to grasp onto that I believed in. Yeah. And uh, so the, the remedies gave me that back, you know, like yeah. not instantly, but, you know, they've brought me back to myself who i am yeah. i don't i don't need to have anything outside of me because i have all the strength i need inside of me which is god which is the universe which is everything yeah so, which is everything which is just like wildly covering everything not yeah. contained not rigid not rules God. No, oh, rules. Oh, but you know what it's the, the contradiction i am a rule follower and i don't like when people break the rules yeah, I don't like you. being told what to do. <laughs> don't tell me what to do. <laughs> well, I mean, There's look at nature. I'm working on. 
But nature is that you have day and you have night, and that's like definite. The sun rises, the sun sets, that's definite. Yeah. Yeah. And then around that, there's a softness of, okay, fine, maybe the sunset will be a little more pink today and a little more orange tomorrow. But the sun will set. Yes. Yeah. You know, so you can, you, can, you can play around with the gray area. Yes. But there's certain things that are just there that there's, that's what happens. Exactly. And I think one of the, the things, I teach meditation as well. So one of the things that my meditation students have, I think the, 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 the most frequently commented on thing they take with them is when I tell them that there's always, there's always blue sky behind those dark clouds. Always blue sky behind those dark clouds. Yeah, I have the sky I'm there, looking. so I'm looking. <laughs> mm -hmm. There's always yeah. blue sky behind the dark clouds. Yeah, always. That's beautiful. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, always. Wow. That's something that will stay with me. Yeah, so I mean, and that's hope. That's what, what, what we're here today, you know, yes. talking about hope. Yeah. So for me, it's like a little thing that they can think about that sticks with them that you know, and gives them hope. You know, there's always blue sky up there behind the darkest of clouds. And um, there's always, 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 always blue sky up there. Yeah. Wow, I love that. Hope is that there's always blue sky behind the darkest clouds. Yes. Wow. Fantastic. And if there's anything you feel that you'd like to tell our audience, what they can take forward with them into 2021, what would that be? I think uh, I think I just said it actually that there's there is blue sky up there, you know, and COVID will subside at some point. Um, it might not be quick enough for most of us, but um, I th I think for me, I've been very lucky in some respects that. You know, my three children and my husband are in the house with me. So even in lockdown, we were together. Well, my son was in Scotland initially, but he did get back eventually. Um, so going into this this coming year, I, th I think it's looking at the little things, you know, looking at the little things around us that we're grateful for, you know, the silver linings that COVID has given us, because there are, you know, there are definitely little, even if it's a tiny one, there's a little silver lining of some sort that has come for uh, even the stressed parents who have had their children home. They've had their children home. Their children have had the parents with them, you know, for months that they wouldn't have had otherwise. You know, they would have been separate. The parents may have been stressed in a different way because they would be juggling the school run and the, the work run and then yes. picking them up in the daycare. And so for me, you know, even in those stressful situations of, um, the, the pay, I, I, I'm so glad that it didn't hit 20 years ago when my three were under 10. So, <laughs> so I, I, I can understand the stress because I was stressed then without COVID. So I can only yeah. understand, like I can only imagine yeah. the, the stress for them. But going forward, yeah, it's the little things. Look at the little things. You know, yeah. look at the, the little tiny things that we can be grateful for. Um, because that that for me that's that's a, that's the big the big thing, the huge thing, the thing that turns my mind from negative to positive is to when the negative thought comes in I try to examine it and then look for the positive in it you know because it, unbelievably there always is <laughs> somewhere hidden in it there is always a positive yeah that's beautifully said and buy some rescue remedy always have rescue remedy in your purse in your pocket in your cupboard you know, it's um, it's such a simple way that when you begin to feel scared or um, impatient, or, I mean, there's lots of impatience going on because we're having to be in close quarters with people that maybe we wouldn't normally be. Yeah. And, and that cherry plum moment, you know, so if you want to feel calmer going forward or more positive going forward, investigate the remedies. You know, you, they're self-care, so you don't have to see a practitioner. The Batch Centre has a list of remedies on the, their website. You can go in, you can look at them, and uh, you can find a practitioner to make them if you want. Or I think the Batch Centre still mails worldwide. So um, wow. that's also a possibility. That's lovely. Thank you so much, Lindsay. And mm -hmm. before we end, uh, would you take us through like a short meditation? Of course. Yeah, of course. Yeah. That would be lovely. Yeah. How long would short be? 
you still tell me what's okay for you. Oh, I'm okay. I can I can do. You. Would Would you like any particular kind of meditation? Just like a healing okay. meditation. Healing meditation. Okay. For ten minutes, yeah. five minutes. Ten minutes. Ten minutes is good. Yeah. We'll lovely. see. Somewhere between five and ten. Okay. Lovely. We'll see yeah. what I'm given. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank so you. I invite you. I invite you if you're watching, just to gently close your eyes. And to become aware of your breath going in at the tip of your nose. Just noticing now the breath going in at the tip of your nose. You can tell yourself you're breathing in. And when you breathe out, you can tell yourself you're breathing out. You can't take a breath for the future. And you can't take a breath from the past. So our breath is a wonderful way to bring us into the present moment. So just breathing in and breathing out. And with your next breath, just notice when the in-breath becomes an out-breath. There's a little pause and it turns a corner. So just notice that with your next breath. And then bringing your attention down to your chest and noticing the movement of your chest with your next breath. Just acknowledging any thoughts that are there. You're using your focus on other things to let your thoughts feed into the background. So just noticing the rise and fall of your chest. And perhaps you notice that your tummy moves as well when you breathe. And maybe your shoulders. And I want you now to bring your attention down to your feet. Hopefully your feet are flat on the floor, but if not, just imagine that the base of your spine or the soles of your feet are attracted to the centre of the earth. And I want you to imagine that you have a beam of light coming from your feet or the base of your spine or both and it's shining right down into the middle of the earth through the floor, through the surface earth, through all the rocks right down into the centre of the earth and there's a beautiful, beautiful red crystal there and the beam of light just wraps itself around it and as you sit there quietly I want you to imagine that there's lots of other beams coming in from all sorts of directions and they're all wrapping themselves around that red crystal and the red crystal becomes brighter and brighter and more and more beams of light come in coming in from other people from the energy of all those who wish healing for the world and each beam of light adds to the brightness of the red crystal and it starts to glow and it starts to emit and give out its own light and that light spreads all through the core of the earth and it spreads up upwards and it comes upwards and into the lakes and the oceans it comes up into the forests the trees it comes up into the mountains and it goes up even into the skies up into the darkest of clouds the red beaming light from the red crystal down in the centre of the earth. It's glowing and it's making the earth glow. And from space, if the astronauts look down, the earth is brighter. It's grown a shade lighter. And every time we do this, every time we connect, with each other in a positive way, wishing for healing for the world and its peoples and all living things. We can help lift the lightness of the world. So for now, I want you just to pay one last bit of attention to that beautiful crystal and give thanks for it being there. And give thanks to yourself for being part of it 
being part of lifting the light of the world. And just for the moment, just untangle your beam of light and allow it to come back inside of you, knowing that at any time you can reconnect with the centre of the earth, any time you wish to make a little bit of a difference to the world. So just notice your toes now, give them a little wiggle. Notice your fingers, give them a little wiggle. Notice your ears and imagine that you can wiggle them and smile. And just take two or three deeper breaths, telling yourself you're back in your body, you're perfectly grounded. And when you're ready, just gently opening your eyes. That was lovely. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Heal the world. Heal the world. Yeah. Gosh, thank you so much, Lindsay. It's lovely welcome. talking to you today. Thank you for inviting me. It's been a lovely morning. Yeah, lots of blessings. For and all to you. of us. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you for connecting. Thank you.